Hello everybody, Aistocky here and welcome to another witchery tutorial. Uh, in this particular episode I'm going to continue from where we finished off last time talking about uh, circle rituals and I'm going to start talking about brews, potions um, and some of the basics that you can kind of get onto with that. I'm not going to go into the, the I guess, uh, more complicated stuff just because there's so much to it. Again, uh, there's this book here, uh, Brews and Infusions, and when you open it up uh, it tells you the brews. So this is the brew of vines, etc, etc, etc. Again, the book is really important. Uh, brew of Raising as an example. If we look up Brew of Vines, that first one just there, it gives you the recipe, and the recipe is right. But if we look up the Brew of Raising, just there, it gives you the same thing. It doesn't tell you that it requires um, you to actually have the I guess special uh, sort of altar power that's required. Um, but before we get into brews, it's it's worth talking about um, probably two things to start with. The first um, is the spinning wheel just here because I've used it. Again, you put the whiff of magic in uh, with a hay bale and it gives you golden thread. Um, the next thing is the thing that I have in my inventory already which is called a creeper heart. Now this is a rare drop when you kill a creeper with an Arthana. Um, I was hoping that I could show you. Um, we'll, we'll just we'll see if this works anyway. I'm not completely convinced it will, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, let's go for looting three. Let's spawn a couple of creepers and see if we can get one to drop one. Again, it's quite a rare drop, um, so you have to. Should have added sharpness. Now, as with all of these things, oh, there you go, I got one. Um, so, as with all of these things, you only have to strike uh, the final blow with the Arthana to actually get it. And you can see that out of four, I got two then, um, using this looting three. So, they are a rare drop, um, but not astronomically rare. Um, so, now the next thing that we're going to need um, is we're going to need to impregnate this leather um, in order to be able to make it into leather that is useful to make magical clothing. Uh, so the way that you do that um, is you place a diamond in here with an oil of vitriol and you get the oil of vitriol when you're making your gypsum so you should have uh, two of them by the time you've made some chalk which is excellent because um, I believe you need two diamonds for this setup. You get two diamond vapor and an odor of purity for each one. Now we come over here we place the four whiffs of magic in the corner uh, and again I'm using um, whiffs of magic that come from the rowan wood tree which is basically where you get them all from uh, diamond vapor in the center and then in leather all around it and that gives you impregnated leather now you actually only need uh, 11 pieces of impregnated leather uh, but you can't impregnate three and I totally didn't think of that until just then so here we have our four leather but we're waiting on another diamond vapor so once again up to here grab the diamond vapor out so now this clothing is certainly by no means cheap um, but I'll do a quick demo of wearing it and not wearing it soon uh, to show the difference so this is the first piece that you're going to need uh, which is the witch's hat um, so again we've been to the nether so you've got glowstone we just made some thread uh, the next one requires the creeper's heart and that is the robes now these, if we throw them on, um, they look kind of kind of cool. Um, they give protection about the same as leather armor, so the protection's not great. Um, but what they're really useful for is they enchant very well, um, and they're really, really, really useful for brews. Um, so now that we've got our Super Gucci Witch's gear on, we're going to want to make a a brew kettle. Um, so once again we need our attuned stones, put some sticks up the top, we need... there you go, had them in the wrong order, and that gives you a kettle. Now it's a pretty tiny looking little thing, um, and once again you need to position it in the world um, over a piece of netherrack or whatever that has fire, um, much the same as this, and again we would be 
by this point we would have replaced that and we would just have it lit up all the time because that's just the easiest way. So now we once again we place this and you can see that it spreads itself out and that's our kettle. Now this particular one only takes one bucket of water uh, whereas this one over here takes three but again you do want to have that water source nice and close. Um, now I mentioned about putting this here and saying that this gives you that 30% reduction in power. Um, pretty much once you get to the point where you can make other chalk um, I suggest as quickly as you can making some red infernal chalk it requires nether wart and blaze powder um, but once again we've been to the nether so we're into that kind of stuff so I will grab um, white chalk nether wart blaze powder in the correct order now I'm going to grab the book because again I want to show you that the importance of actually having the book here um, so that's the other way of chalk we want the infernal chalk so we're looking at on the order um, of about 3000 altar power still plenty from last time so we'll come over here we will go nether wart blaze powder white chalk and in the very soon there we go red chalk now you can choose to replace one ring of these which gives you half the benefit of the infernal chalk uh, or you can choose to replace both of them uh, my preference is when you can to go through and replace both of them because once again you go from a approximately a 30% discount uh, to about 50% on everything that you make in the cauldron um, and by the time you're getting up to witches brews and things like that you tend to be making a fair bit of stuff in the cauldron um, you need a fair bit of mutandus, you need a fair bit of other things as well um, if you've got an altar that has a lot of power and a slow recharge rate you can just be patient and wait and it will work um, I tend to not like that, so I tend to like to go for a bit of a setup like this. Uh, once again, though, there is a, not a chance, and I'll actually um, I'll do the same recipe again and see what happens, just to see if I end up with um, any kind of any kind of problem, because like I said, there's a a chance for everything that happens um, that you can end up with. I guess it's a bad buff that you get. Um, but let's do a quick demo and see what happens. There's also every chance that absolutely nothing at all will happen. Um, but I've ended up with slowness, I've ended up with mining fatigue, uh, I once ended up with blindness. Um, so you go, I was struck by lightning, uh, set on fire, uh, and paralyzed Mark III. It was a serious bit of fire too. So like I said, sometimes bad stuff will happen. Oh, and I've damaged all my robes. Um, actually, this is probably a really good chance to demonstrate for you. Um, you can actually repair the robes. Um, you can Now you can, impair, you can repair it uh, with impregnated leather, or you can repair it with an anvil and regular leather. wasn't actually anticipating that I was going to get things damaged so I'm glad this will actually work for me. So I put the anvil down so you can see if we take the hat off, place the hat, place a piece of regular leather for one level it will repair it. Um, it will not do that though I believe with impregnated leather. No, it will only take regular leather. Uh, however, if you haven't got enough iron to be able to afford that, what you can do is come over to here, place the item, and I believe it's four impregnated leather around it. There you go. Um, four impregnated leather costs a diamond. Um, that's not super cheap. Considering you can use one leather, um, I think you are much better off using the anvil if that's an option for you. But again, it depends on you know where you are in the game at the time. But I've been kind of beating around the bush and I haven't actually got to making any potions yet. So let's go uh, grab the potions, give a bit of a demo on how they work. Um, and do a bit of a demo as well on with and without 
um, yeah, sorry, with and without the what am I talking about? The I guess the witch's clothing, just to show you the difference. So um, the brew of raising is actually a pretty cool one. Um, when you're looking at this one, the recipe is not actually all that expensive, and some of these are quite cheap. Some some are very expensive though. Um, vines, obviously, you know where you can get vines. Uh, red mushrooms, brown mushrooms, same kind of thing. If you're near a swamp biome, that's easy to get. Uh, wheat is pretty easy. Rika Misfortune, I'll show you. Now, Tongue of Dog, you can either uh, kill a regular wolf with an Arthana, or once you go to the Nether, you will fight Hellhounds. Um, and when you kill a Hellhound, it's a reasonably common drop to get the Tongue of Dog. Uh, but the Reek of Misfortune, you get from the Alder Sapling. So again, not the world's most complicated. So I'll show you the, the brew of vines and what it does. Again, it's pretty easy stuff. So we need vines. And again, you've got to have got those with shears. We need that reek that we were just talking about. Oh, wow. T-O. Having some significant typing issues. Um... What was the other thing we needed? We needed the two kinds of mushrooms and a piece of wheat. Now you also need to, at the time when you're doing this, make sure you have glass bottles in your inventory. Now the way that it works um, is you pretty typically get uh, three clicks on whatever you make. Um, but let's not get too far in it. Let's just show what we make. So we need to throw the vine in. So you can see the little black sparklies. That means things are working. So we'll throw the mushroom in. Throw the mushroom in. Tongue of dog. Wheat. Reek of misfortune. The bubbles go white. That means it has worked. So at this point, we just right click. And you can see we got three three of the brewer vines um, before we ran out of potion that was in there. Um, so I'll grab the same set of gear again, stash those away up there. We want vines, red mushroom, okay fine, mushroom, one of each. What was it? It was wheat. I'm going to remember this off the top of my head now. Oh, the pressure. Oh, there was one more thing. Reek. One, two, three, four, five, six. That sounds about right. So we'll throw them in. Doop, 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 doop. Yep, we've got white bubbles again. So we once again you get three goes at it, but if we actually throw the witch's robe and hat on when we go to do it, bloop, bloop, you can see that each one gets you two. Um, now I think uh, one gives you a, I think this gives you, there you go, 35% chance of a second brew, and this one also gives you a 35% chance of a second brew. Um, so collectively you get a 70% chance each time you do one uh, of getting a second. And you can see in the case of what I did, I ended up with six. So I now have a total of nine brew of the vines. Um, oops. Let's just throw it here. So as you can see, wherever you throw it, it spawns vines. Uh, the bigger and flatter the thing you throw it at, the bigger the kind of run of vines that it spawns. Now, vines are actually um, a fairly useful thing here because they will actually increase. So you can see there it's gone from 4080 to 4284. So those vines have given me an extra 200 alt up because you know, they are natural living things. Um, you can also use them um, if you've got like a particular cliff you need to climb down. Um, you could throw the brew of vines and you can see that it goes all the way from the top to the bottom um, and you can then use that to climb all the way up. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready for the next brew uh, and I'll be back in just a few moments. See you soon. 
Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, I'm going to make two potions now. Uh, this is the first one I'm, that I'm going to make. Uh, the Brew of Raising. Um, so I've got these ingredients in the wrong order, but that's okay. It's just a quick switch around. Uh, and then I can show you what that potion is and what it does. That was less than ideal. So as long as we're getting black bubbles, uh, we know that it's working. There we go, white bubbles. So that time I only got four. Um, but that's okay, because four is still better than three. Um, now I will make the final potion that I'm going to make. Um, this potion in of itself, um, I don't really see a lot of use for. Um, but it's an important part of making another potion. So we have white bubbles. Once again, only four. Yeah, that's alright, not too bad. So this is the brew of love. And now the brew of love won't show me the uses of it. Well, that's just fine. So it's actually used uh, in the brew of sleeping, uh, which is one that we will talk about uh, probably in the next episode. Um, but this is actually another really quite cool one um, that's not too expensive. Uh, you'll get a lot of slime, so that's not too bad. So I'm going to show you this one as well, just because I got, you know, a little bit of spare. Um, so it was a Bella Donna flower. <coughs> Excuse me. Magma cream dandelion. So magma cream dandelion. Belladonna flower, quick lime, and two oil of vitriols. Now, what I've actually done to make this a little bit easier, so when you're throwing things, I don't get resorted around. Uh, I've gone into NEI and turned auto refill NEI. Um, it's not NEI; it's inventory tweaks, and I've turned auto refill off. Um, that can be pretty useful sometimes. flower back please after doing things for a while you start to find a spot where you can sort of stand and throw things and know that it works excellent so that particular potion is the brew of erosion um, let's turn this rain off um, now this particular potion um, it has a couple of uses that I'm going to demonstrate now. The first uh, is that when you throw it, whatever it hits, it basically destroys. That's the first thing that you can use it for. So you can use it almost like for mining. Um, now the next thing, um, and this is where it actually comes in quite handy, um, if you get a, a fair chunk of obsidian, So let's say, you know, you are downstairs, you found a nice pool of lava, you've just thrown some water to turn to obsidian. If we now throw this on, you can see it pops all the obsidian and you can pick it up. So if I throw out this 47 obsidian, um, You know, you could see, the first time I think it went from 29 to 47. Um, so it's, it's actually quite a good way of harvesting obsidian. Um, and you get quite a, through, uh, quite a few throws at it. Now I'm going to put myself in creative mode for the next. Um, now I have read that this works quite well. Um, I haven't actually tried it myself. but I am of the belief that this is um, quite an effective thing to do. So, spawn some creepers down there. Now, what it said is if, a cre if an entity is hit by it, they take quite a lot of damage. So he took four hearts of damage then. That didn't seem... OK, 
Okay, it's definitely only four hearts of damage. That's not as effective as I was hoping for. Um, I guess... Obviously you could kill people with it. Um, I can think of much better ways to do it. And it doesn't have any splash damage effect, so that's not actually all that useful. Um, so the other one I wanted to show you, and it needs to be night time for this, so let's enable night. Make it night. This is the Brew of Raising. So we will throw it down here. You can see it creates a little sort of half grave and spawns some undead. Now those undead, they're bubbling, and the reason for that is they are non-hostile undead. Otherwise they act like any other kind of normal undead. So you can see the zombie there. But they have that bubbling effect because um, they won't actually have any kind, they won't, they won't harm me. They're, um, you know, completely friendly to me. Um, that can be really cool if you're on a server because they will attack other players. Um, <clears throat> it can also be really cool a little bit later on uh, when I'm going to talk about the Necromancer's Stone um, because any of these guys that I spawn um, I can get them to do my bidding for me so that's kind of cool it only spawns two at a time um, so it, it doesn't take a lot of resources um, Wool of Bat, Oil of Vitriol um, Mutandus, you know, none of these take quite a lot you know, there's not a lot of resources in any of them um, so you could spawn up an army of skeletons just to kill them and get the experience and stuff from them um, but I don't think that's a particularly good use for it um, so the final potion that we talked about um, was the brew of love and like I said that'll be the very first thing we talk about next episode um, where we start to talk about the dream world so thank you very much for watching um, I hope you're finding this tutorial series uh, informative and useful um, again it's kind of focusing things in the way that you could do them yourself um, you know, there are lots of potions in here, like this particular one here. Um, doesn't really take a lot of resources either. Um, and it, when you throw it, it spawns ice. And if you throw it and hit, an, hit a mob entity, it actually surrounds them in ice. Um, and that works for some, you know, big mobs as well. Brew of the Depths stops you from breathing air and allows you to breathe water. Um, so be underwater when you drink it. Um, but that gives you... And that's going to be really handy for 1.8 um, when you actually get into you know, uh, the underwater things. Uh, you can use this to turn, basically infect things into something else, um, turn villages into zombie villages. Um, the only reason I could think you might want to do that is that would allow you to move um, villages en masse to somewhere else, get the zombies to chase you. Um, Brew of Sleeping, like I said, we're going to talk about soon. Blue of the f Brew of the Flowing Spirit we'll talk about soon as well. Um, Brew of Wasting basically just makes everything else waste. I suppose there's finally one more. I'm not going to show you how to make it. It's just the one that I'm going to um, sort of show you how it works. Uh, Brew of Ink also. Um, again, probably more useful on servers than anything else, but Brew of Sprouting, whatever surface it hits, it creates a long tree out of. Um, so you could use that to make a bridge. You could also, if you're at the bottom of a ravine, and you need to get up, you can jump, throw it down, and you get to the top of it. Um, good if you're desperate for wood and you're underground or something. Um, brew of webs you can use to create a whole lot of spider webs to stick things. Um, brew of thorns just basically spawns a cactus. Um, I'm sure that has some uses. Um, the fact that you need cactus green to make it means it's not a substitute for getting cactus if you can't find cactus anywhere. Um, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of brews, a lot of potions, and some of them are actually really quite cool. Other ones, you'd probably have to think for yourself a little bit about how to use them, but they're probably pretty cool anyway. So once again, really hope you guys are enjoying the series. If there's anything else that you want to see, um, obviously not the next episode, because we're going to talk about the brew of sleeping in the dream world. Um, but otherwise, let me know, and I can put in the episode after that. Thanks very much for watching. A-Stocky out.